Hi guys, I'm Shirley Lee with Entertainment Weekly and I'm here with the cast and producers of 24 Legacy. I'm going to start with the gentleman in the back. Uh, so we've got Howard, Evan, and Manny here, the producers of 24 Legacy. Tell me about why it's important to expand the world of 24, especially when it ties to the politics of today. You know, we were, we were very excited about, about uh, not only dealing with the, the, world, the world that's changed and the threats that have changed, and the types of things we're seeing going on in this country and all over the world, but very excited about being able to bring a new character into it. Uh, you mean this uh, guy? Meaning guy. this guy. <laughs> uh, just someone from a different generation and a different world. And, and that's really the center of the series, which is, is bringing you know, a more contemporary, younger, more innocent, uh, and optimistic person from a very different background to, to head the show. Um, and that's very exciting for all of us. So then, Corey, tell me about your character, Eric. He's mm -hmm. not like Jack Bauer in any way. Would he be a total 180 from Jack, or is he still kind of similar? I don't know. I think it's interesting because we're, we're the, first of all, it was a huge gift to kind of get this role, and, and because in some ways he, there, there may be anti-hero uh, qualities, or in some ways they might be similar or, or unlike, and we're still trying to find that, but I think at the core of it, he's a young army ranger who is returning home and, and finding, you know, finding out what civilian life is. And, and in the midst of this terrorist, you know, uh, this terrorist plot that's happening and unraveling before his eyes. And so he's dealing with the rules overseas, uh, they're, they're different at home, you know what I mean? And things that worked overseas don't work over at, at, at home. And so um, I think it's, it's the challenge of that, the challenge of the clock, um, the and challenge of the clock. The yes. challenge of the clock. I mean, <laughs> uh, and it's just a lot of fun to play a character that um, that looks to and, and with the family dynamic that looks like America today. You know. Well, the clock's ticking for you for your series premiere too. I mean, this is going to come on right after the Super Bowl. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. So right now, how much pressure are you feeling going into this? The pressure is obviously there, but but the, I mean, the great thing is right right now we're down to shooting, and it feels, I mean, this is what, this is what we, you know, it just feels good, you know, it feels right. Um, the pressure is there, it is Super Bowl night, and, and it, is a, it is a huge legacy to, um, to take on, but I think we're ready, and I think, I think the, the writing is there, the, the characters are there, um, the timing is right politically, um, so I, I, think, uh, I think we're ready. I don't if know. anything, Shirley, I think we, we looked at it you talk about gifts as mm -hmm. a real vote of confidence yeah. in terms of what these right. guys had put down on the page yep. and uh, what they were seeing footage-wise. So we feel real, I mean, that, that it's the best way that anybody can conceive of like launching a, a, a yeah. show, yeah. so. Yeah, well then Miranda, my question for you, uh, I guess this is kind of a spoiler alert if you don't watch Homeland, you just played a very devious character on Homeland. Now tell me about your character here, how does she compare, how does Rebecca compare? Who is um, she? I'd have to say Rebecca is much more of a patriot than Allison was. Um, I hope so. <laughs> but you <laughs> never know in these shows. So is, so is Benedict Arnold. <laughs> yeah, you can turn within 24 hours, and I think it's pretty possible. <laughs> she uh, was the head of CTU, but she's transitioning out. Um, but I just thought it was so interesting to play a woman in that kind of position. We're used to seeing men in those roles, so it was like a great opportunity to have a woman in that position. And Jimmy plays your husband. Am I getting that right? That's right, right, Jimmy? Okay. So what is that? As of right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> Lots of things happening in a single day. <laughs> they haven't read episode eight yet. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, so what is your dynamic like? Uh, Jimmy, I know you're playing a senator. And so you two are both very high up, high ranking. How, how do you work together, the two of your characters? I think what the writers have talked about is envisioning a kind of power couple that traverse the stratus of uh, politics mm -hmm. in this DC Understand area. Understand each other's worlds really well. Sacrificed for each other. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting that he had sacrificed for her when she was uh, uh, running CTU. And she's actually leaving her job at CTU because he's running for president. And it's, it, was, it was a very conscious... Again, Jimmy? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
uh, a very conscious decision on both their parts, a very modern marriage, and, and you know, a part of the show is about balancing that and the strains that will will eventually happen. And we've never done a presidential candidate story, actually, on the show. We've done presidents, we've done right. ex-presidents, but we've never done a candidate story, which is really, puts a lot of pressure on, on, on him mm -hmm. how to deal with the events that are happening because everything goes back to the candidate. And now, I also want to know about this terrorist conspiracy, what's happening behind the scenes there. Uh, how much can you tell me, gentlemen in the back who can pull all the strings, about what's going to be affecting these guys right here? Well, what's interesting, the idea is it really stems from, from Corey's character, and it's a, it's a group of army rangers who, uh, as the story takes off, they were the ones who, who, who uh, took out this high-value terrorist target. And because of that, ha had to go kind of undercover and, 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 and hide their names because of retaliation. But as the, the story starts, we find out one by one they're being killed off. And Corey's character is the last one who realizes what's going on and, and launches off. So it launches into, that's only the tip of the iceberg, because we find out there's a large conspiracy, which deal, deals, goes into the politics of it, and CTU. And gradually, that's one of the things, the fun things about the characters, that Corey is a, is a soldier, and is slowly, he's, he's not used to the espionage world. And so slowly he's coming into this world and learning it's a different world than in the battlefield, the good guys, the bad guys. He's, it's kind of a gradual journey. To, it's, you're really learning about the, you're really seeing the education of a CTU agent. And, but, but laced them with a conspiracy. This is what happens in a pitch meeting. <laughs> and, Sounds then, good. And, then the, and then the executive says, I'll buy that show. <laughs> Sounds good. We're going to do it. <laughs> well, I know you guys have talked before about how this isn't a reboot. This is, in fact, an expansion of the world. We mentioned that. So we're going to end on that note. Stick with EW.com for more near ComCon coverage. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.